Well, time for a quick update, boys and girls. I'm still in Illinois. Uh, and it's amazing how fast time flies when you don't do anything, right? You know how... I remember I had a friend who was uh, unemployed. He lost his job and he said, I don't have any time, you know? <laughs> I'm always busy, I'm always doing something else. People that don't work, they will understand what I mean. I think it's true, you know, when, it, when you're not busy, uh, there's always something coming up, some meetings, books, movies, and you try to meet friends, you don't have time. And so today, like, I got up at 6 o'clock. Um, daylight is at 5.30 local time, central time. And, of course, these trucks, you know, they leave real early here. And I sleep with open uh, windows. Um, like, I really love this feature on the sleeper where you can pull up the window and there's still uh, that mosquito net in there. Uh, but the only drawback is that it's noisy when trucks go by. And so I got up, got uh, went to uh, grab some coffee here, came back, started my computer, and uh, I used that little trickle charge method, you know, with the regular USB cable and the regular cigarette lighter thing. And as, as long as the uh, laptop is turned off completely, and I kept it plugged in for like eight hours till uh, you know when I sleep in the morning boom 100% beautiful and I use it all day and only now what is it six o'clock I'm I'm at about 15% and like you see app MacBooks they have pretty good uh, uh, battery life but now I know it will start complaining if I'll try to use this thing over here it will start complaining and beeping and I might need to uh, start the engine okay so I just want to describe what i did today so uh, first of all of course my prior priority was permits because indiana was about to be issued and i received michigan but they were for the wrong configuration uh with the stinger uh first of all the spacings are different right and the overall length is different and that's how you know if they catch you like that what they do is they just void your permit and then they give you a fine for driving without a permit which to me always seemed like a double dipping you know kind of like idea like okay cancel my permit but why you not you you just cancel it now you find finding me for driving without the permit i got here i had the permit you just cancel it but that's what they do and so that can be real dangerous when you're 192 thousand pounds gross because they look at the legal weight, 80,000, and you 192, so <laughs> you 112,000 over. All right, and you drove how many miles? 50 miles, okay, uh, we have this rate over here. So many cents per mile per ton of the weight of uh, above the legal limit. At least that's what they do in Ohio, right? So basically, you wanna make sure that everything on your permit is correct, especially spacings and stuff like that. It happened to me where the guy actually made me uh, hold the measuring tape and uh, he checked all the spacings against those i had on the on the permit and that's how i got that big ticket in uh, in ohio uh, a year ago two years ago and so anyway so that was my major concern to get these updated permits and there was i changed them yesterday right monday morning and not nothing didn't hear yesterday from the uh, permit broker so i emailed her today i said any news and she says no not yet I said, is it Indiana or is it Michigan? Like, what's the delay? Because Michigan usually doesn't take too long. And she says, no news is good news. I'm like, geez, how bad can it be, you know? Basically, now we wait. And then uh, about one hour later, she sends me um, Indiana. I check the, um, I check the length, the spacings, everything is good. They gave me lots of weight. Uh, on the axles, so I feel pretty pretty confident. I'm, I'm not gonna end up in jail this time I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. It's a joke relax But yeah, I got lots of weight uh, Sometimes it surprises me, right? Why do we even bother with these boosters right and spreaders when <laughs> like these guys over here, Illinois, Indiana New York, PA uh, even like Wisconsin they will give you crazy amounts of weight on a quad, you know, four axles, as long as you have, uh, you know, your rating is okay for the axles, and mine are 25,000, and your tires are wide enough. And by the way, that's one, one thing I wanted to touch upon, is that quite often, 
people uh, leave uh, comments under my videos asking asking like one Russian guy said а зачем это? why do you need this? it's when I was showing a video with the stinger like people from Europe from Australia they don't understand this concept of uh, bridge formula right and uh, that's just unfortunate but this is this is Canada I'm from Canada this is US right so US and Canada our rules are totally different than than on the other side of the of the big pond as they say right so over here even if you have 50,000 pound axle right let's say you buy a trailer and you say hey I want to go crazy okay 50 is probably not available but I know I saw it on, on, on websites that you can get some trailers instead of typical 25,000 like no the actual axle rating you can get 30,000 and I think they do a lot of that in like in Quebec uh, and basically in Eastern Canada and that's where they like uh, wider tires uh, they, they run a lot of those guys over there Quebec New Brunswick they like they run 305 millimeter tires on the trailer they run uh, 315 the first three numbers on the tire sidewall 315 on the drives and actually quite a few states will give you more weight because they go by the inch of the width or the, by the millimeter like I know my Ontario gives me 10 kilos per one millimeter which is 22 pounds so the wider your tires are the more weight you can get but of course you cannot go above your axle rating right so if you have like four tires which are one meter wide they will not give you more weight they will ask hey wait a second what's your axle rated for you know Um, so what I wanted to mention is that yeah so you need wider tires and uh, no wait I, I lost my thought I was talking about these trailers and Quebec and oh yeah yeah the 30,000 axle yeah yeah so so you can get 30,000 pound axle but then you gotta make sure that the tires you put on have this have enough rating and that's what sometimes people uh, people lose that thing and you know, don't don't take that into account because I, I often see let's say a 55 ton trailer and then I look at tires and it says tire size 255 255 that's just ridiculous you know you that's okay for a 35 ton or 40 ton trailers but 255 millimeters is the width of the tire that's not wide enough you know like maybe you'll get like 18,000 per axle so check the tires you know so the tires must match axle capacity and by the way in Ontario right so I got uh, 425 tires on the steer and many people were telling me you're crazy you're using these uh, flow tires and Ontario again gives me 10 kilos per one millimeter right so 425 times 2 times 10 times 2.2 which is pounds that's 18,700 and how do I know because I already calculated this many times by the way sorry for my dirty look if you can see this but uh, I finally attached my brand new shiny chains and I found some massive poles in there inside and I had to crawl in between all kinds of hoses and uh, find a way to tighten those binders by the way one bad thing about this setup these classic binders is that you need a lot of room for the cheetah bar right and a couple of times I had to remove that binder and put it in the spot where the cheetah bar had enough you know there's a, enough open space without hitting anything but I did it so I added two more chains so one each chain is uh, what is it 6600 so it can hold uh, 13,000 pounds right 13.2 plus 13.2 so that's extra 26,000 pounds of strength every little bit helps um, and so yeah over here we cannot use those trailers and, and by the way those trailers like everybody mentions this Feynmanville uh, they cost half a million bucks you know like who does this I go to Kaufman I buy a, I bought a 55 ton with three axles for fifty three thousand dollars like why would I want to buy a Fayetteville for half a million like unless I'm like really clinically insane you know and and again nowadays more and more factories uh, offer as an option steerable axles on the trailer right especially of course if you have more than three 
like uh, typical Ontario actually some people were uh, local guys right I could see that these were Americans and Canadians no actually Americans Canadians know this uh, not Western Canada guys but Eastern Canada guys like the way I'm set up now a tandem Jeep and four axles in the back that's actually the best setup for Ontario believe it or not because uh, with this setup four in the back and tandem and regular truck either regular truck or like my four axle truck you get 78,000 kgs or 172,000 pounds gross under the annual permit so that's the heaviest weight you can get under the annual permit and that's the configuration you need quad tandem jeep okay uh, the only problem is as many people people learned in ontario you cannot load more than hundred thousand pounds on the trailer because because you have the jeep so the truck is very far away from the load so uh, typically anything over hundred thousand you overload the trailer but i cannot do anything over hundred thousand because my trailer is uh is uh is so heavy right so with the booster i was 72.4 72,400 pounds uh booster is 4,000, so i'll be 68 once i get rid of it i'll be 68 something so uh, 172 minus 68 that's what i can hold 104 and this other load they want me to do it's just over 100,000. so you know actually it'll help get rid of the booster because i don't need it um, and speaking about the booster that was another thing I did today uh, I was talking to G to JC the manufacturer uh, because the we were trying to find a way to get this repaired at cost well I, basically I have to pay no warranty they refused to look at this as a warranty occurrence uh, they said that's not their problem uh, that's the position of the manufacturer so no comments from me uh, but I appreciated the help they were trying to uh, provide I said can I you know I'm gonna be passing your your London facility um, on the way to my uh, destination in Ontario can I maybe stop by and you guys take this and then you take your time fix it you know whenever you can and they asked me for more pictures so I sent them a bunch of pictures and when they looked at it they said uh, Oh, we actually did actually the damage is uh, pretty extensive and uh, this will take much more time than we thought it would and uh, they said our plant is closing first week of August for you know some kind of a kind of a summer vacation I guess they don't have enough work <laughs> or maybe it's just something related to COVID-19 I don't know but anyway they said the plant is closing for a week or two weeks or something in August and so they have a whole bunch of project projects they have to finish so they don't have time for me and I asked them if anybody else can do it because they have a bunch of plants all over Ontario but they all specialize you know like one plant deals with trailers like these guys in London mostly do uh, truck bodies uh, like dump trucks you know like um, all these special beds and the guy said they used to do trailers but now all trailers are made north of toronto so they they have these specialized plants right so anyway i was you know i, I was happy that they agreed to help me despite you know the differences we had but unfortunately it's not in the cards and so that's another thing i did i was looking online trying to find a machine shop and it looks like what's called the machine shop in the states in us in canada it's when you google it's like uh, welding and fabrication uh, you don't see machine you will see like machining something like boom 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 machining you know like Tim's machining and fabrication or, or John's welding and fabrication and so I found a couple but when I look at the projects that they do it's like some stupid ladders you know some boxes I don't see like the serious stuff where people can modify trailers so I think what I my uh, like who can do this first off it's the uh, trailer place uh, I think Wabash Wabash trailer place now they changed their name but then Kitchener these are the guys when I got the trailer I went oh when I got the uh, Jeep and Sting I went there they, atta they attached the D-rings they welded the D-rings on and I also know they uh, when I had that issue with uh, ramps 
on 55 ton Fontaine they they welded some plates in there so I know they have steel they have this and they have that they have welding machines they have welders so I know they can they can probably do it and then another guy another place that can do it is uh, if you remember when I got my Mack truck uh, for some reason they said uh, the lift axles cannot be installed at the plant um, and so the truck came with uh, overall three axles and uh, and they were doing all this fabricating and installment inside that body shop uh, Mac body shop and I know these guys have everything and they also do collision work and stuff like that so I know these guys can do it and then there's another place called uh, Chiefs Chiefs Collision in uh, Kitchener I know those guys do do lots of work as well but they mostly work with trucks so basically yeah, it's not like you know you point your finger at the map and you find somebody because it's uh, it's a lot of work so if you guys have any ideas for Canada again not for US for Canada oh one guy left a comment saying hey check the out check out this guy in Port Huron he's uh, like a super experienced welder he gave me even his phone number so I called the guy and he's like hello <laughs> like who the heck is calling you know and I said hey you do welding right and he said uh, I said is this Bob he says, yeah, I used to for 40 years. I just retired three weeks ago. So, but anyway, I'm pretty sure, yeah, welding. Something that has welding in the name, welding and fabrication. Kind of like the guys that uh, made the um, the shims. Remember those guys in XL? XL welding. Uh, XL, was it custom welding? But anyway, it was XL welding near Red D, Alberta. Very nice guys. So that's what I need. I need a welding shop that can do some custom fabricating. And that's what that's what I was killing my time uh, with. And then I got an email from a guy who used to work for a um, different company. Then he switched companies. He was my sales guy at that company. And then now he's emailing me and he says, hey, now I work for this dealer, trailer dealer. And he says, uh, I saw your trailer on Kijiji. You know online in Canada are you looking for a new trailer and I said well I'm just kind of like testing the waters trying to see if I can get a trailer with one more axle right like in this case it would be very useful to have one more axle uh, in the back there I said I don't necessarily want like a 65 or 200 ton trailer I just want pretty much the same I have just made maybe uh, and that's what I wanted to mention I thought this would be of interest to you guys what would I change right and this guy says uh, okay so I said can you do a trade-in that's the most of course difficult question because I still owe money on the trailer and usually nobody wants to do trade-ins on these uh, heavy haul trailers and he says well how much do you owe and uh, do, you know and I said well I can I own uh, there's no payments on the 36 inch neck extension no payments on the 83 inch neck extension no payments on the booster which of course first I have to fix uh, I only have payments on the Jeep and the trailer and I cannot sell the Jeep because I only got it in uh, what like late December I made three payments and then this COVID-19 happened and I got def I got deferred payments Who's calling here? Okay, hold on a second. Yep. Yeah. yeah, that was one of my fans from uh, from uh, Indiana, and we just chatted like for half an hour. He was asking me a question. I said, "Hey, I'm recording the video with all the updates," but he still had questions. He didn't want to wait. Um, but I think I stopped when I said, uh, so JC said, no, they're too busy. They cannot fix this uh, stinger at one of their plants. And then uh, a guy was asking me about, uh, the, about my trailer. And so I said, yeah, I don't care. I really don't want to do anything super crazy because this is already crazy, 120,000. So honestly, I don't I don't want to see myself uh, you know for one guy company something like 70 ton 80 ton that's just overkill you know 
Um, so I think 60, 65 tons. I like this range. And Fontaine now sells a 60 ton with three plus two, which was not available before. But I went to their website, I still don't see it listed. Uh, 60 ton still only shows as a three plus one or two plus two. Uh, but most companies, if you tell them that you want three plus two in the back, it's a 65 ton. Okay, and that's what this guy said. He said, we're gonna make you a quote for a 65 ton, three plus two in the back. And he says, uh, what do you want me to spec for the deck? And I talked to, with a couple of friends who runs some heavy stuff and this other guy runs a 55 ton out of Florida and he has a 28 um, 28 foot deck and I said do you have any regrets about 28 you wanna you wish you would have gotten a shorter deck he says no I wish I have I had more you know and so I told this guy I said give me 28 feet in the well give me two options for the deck height one is a drop side rail because now I only do big loads, I don't do small loads anymore. Or give me like a super low profile level deck, like 15, 16, 17, 18 inches, whatever is available, without, without the trailer getting too heavy. Because the thing is, if your deck height is too low, then they have to use more metal, more steel, and it becomes super heavy. Like, I'm, you know, like XL, they have this mini deck, and they're not that strong and there's a big camber so if you don't have a full load the trailer is going to be actually super tall so too low is not good either you know but somewhere in the middle maybe like 16 18 inches uh, but uh, drop side rail was 16 on the sides and and again because now i do all these big loads actually drop side rail would be would be you know would work I don't do small dozers, I don't do small grape harvesters, like that's what I had problems before when I had the drop side drill. Um, and I said the biggest problem is also, so yeah, three plus two because I need one more axle, longer deck, and uh, of course the boost has to be, has to have some kind of an equalization, either air or hydraulics, I don't care, but the neck, you know, I mentioned this before, uh, it's very annoying you have only 101 inch neck on the on the 60 ton because if you don't use a jeep right you don't need the big neck so you, you just end up using your 101 but it's too short and you anything like 80,000 pounds you end up overloading your drives because you cannot move the fifth wheel far enough forward and so you need like 110 at least 115 120 and so I told him, I said, I want the base neck, the base neck to be 115, 125, and then I want to have the flip box long enough so I can use my Jeep. And so he says, so I, he's still going to talk to his boss to see if they're going to allow me to trade in, because again, like I mentioned, most guys, uh, you know, it's hard to trade in a heavy haul trailer. But if they do allow it, I was thinking that, that I can give them the trailer with four axles, uh, the booster after I fix it and rebuild it, and two necks, 83 inch and 36 inch. And I will keep the Jeep because the Jeep I just got in January, I owe too much money on it. And the Jeep is fine. I've had no issues with it, put it full touch wood. Um, and and I just had three months of uh, deferred payments, so I only made like three payments this year on the Jeep, you know. So I still have to pay like five years for it. But again, it would work, right? So I would use this, my truck, the, ten, the existing tandem Jeep, and just get their trailer with a long neck and three plus two and a long deck, and the deck is lower than mine, you know. And, uh, and on my trailer, actually, one thing is that I noticed that I should have gotten a shorter neck extension. Like this 83, it's too long. Uh, I look at my gap. The gap between the end of the Jeep and the trailer is 30 inches. You know, it's too much. It, it can be 10 or 8 and you still have room to turn. 
you're not gonna hit the the trailer with the Jeep you know and when you when, when you're this far so not enough weight goes on the Jeep and not enough weight goes on the truck but more weight goes on the trailer so uh, I think I could have gotten uh, instead of 83 I could have gotten uh, maybe 63 you know like 20 inches shorter and what that would do is the that neck extension would be lighter and it would be stronger right there would be less flexing in there but now i'm stuck with this one so so that's the it's always exciting to talk about new trailers and stuff like that but again it's super difficult to get rid of a 60 ton super specialized trailer so unless these guys allow me a, a trade in i don't see how i can get a new trailer so but we'll see we'll see what they say you know and and the last thing i did today uh so all my permits were issued indiana and michigan the new revised versions and of course i look at the michigan permit and there was a mistake there uh like i started saying in the beginning always check the um the spacings and stuff like that and if it's for you like your license plate your name in there right everything else is fine but for some reason the revised michigan permit still shows my overall length as 105 105 feet and i emailed the broker the permit broker i said there's a mistake there do you think i'll be okay using it or shall we change it and she says i'll change it with no ch at no charge and so she sent me a new one i'm 96 feet long now and in michigan i only need one escort one pilot and that's when i started calling it was already like four o'clock started calling trying to find a pilot for tomorrow i found a website uspilots.com kind of like a free website where all these guys advertise you know and they have free listings in there and you can search by state pretty good website uspilots.com and i searched in illinois i called a bunch of people everybody's too busy a car for tomorrow no we don't have anybody everybody's working i called and i went to indiana busy and then finally I, I i got lucky in michigan i found a lady that lives uh one hour somewhere near kalamazoo kalamazoo michigan so she's one hour away from indiana line and actually i wanted to get a uh, uh, escort to help me out here in illinois even though i i technically i don't need an escort but you know I'll be going on this uh, detour, Highway 1, the Chicago Street, uh, US 83, you know, they always send you on this detour uh, to go around uh, I-94, uh, 294. And so I know it's very slow, there's lots of turns, and I thought, you know, I would get the pilot, but for this girl from Kalamazoo, she, it's too far. She says she would have to charge me for overnight stay like she said uh, if you want me in to pick you up in illinois where i am right now she says i would have to leave today and spend the night at the hotel and then of course she would charge me for the hotel uh but she says if you want me to pick you up at the michigan line then there's no overcharge oh no no overnight charges and it's just dollar 50 a mile for all the months and it's about from that point it's about 300 miles uh to the canadian border so she's gonna charge me 450 us um and so yeah we uh that's what i'm doing so i'm not gonna use a pilot from here like i don't have to and i already know this highway one there i know all these turns but i'll go super slow it's gonna be stressful so tomorrow is gonna be i have you know my skin is peeling on the head because i got burned right over there at this wind farm so my skin is peeling all over the place uh, so yeah that's the plan get up at uh, 5 5 15 tomorrow raise the trailer check all chains go grab coffee brush my teeth and be on the road at 5 or 10 to 6 the sunrise at 5 30 and and so 6 is 7 eastern time so that's two hours that should be enough for me to do 70 miles to michigan line and we agreed that she's gonna meet me at nine o'clock over there and then it'll be a rush 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 
to complete this journey before the sunset but the sunset is at 9 uh, near the Canadian border so I think we'll we'll make it it just again I'm not gonna I'm, I'm not gonna drive faster than 45 miles per hour guys and this is a scary load and I'll be stopping every hour to check all my chains or every like hundred miles I'm not taking any risks whatsoever oh and yeah I um, like I mentioned I think why I'm so dirty I climbed in right and I hooked up the chain so now I have three chains on each side in the front three chains on each side in the middle so six three chains on each side in the back and then I put these two more so I'm not sure what else I can do like I have one chain left no binders so we're done as far as chaining is concerned we're done so now last thing I gotta do now is uh, just print out my permits Michigan Indiana and look ag look again at the route make note of uh, all the turns and uh, and have a good night's sleep so take care so keep your fingers crossed I hope I'll make it tomorrow to uh, to the Canadian border But that's why they pay us the big bucks, except in this case, it's not the big bucks. It's it's actually, you know, does not pay that well. It does not pay as well as it should, let's just say. Uh, if you take into account all this stress, you know, and it took me three days to load. But of course, that was partially because of that stinger getting broke. But, you know it's a lot of work a lot of work securing a lot of work you know you're wary you order these permits and so yeah illinois was 400 dollars. indiana permit one was 300 then we had to amend it so indiana permit two was uh, 285 michigan was um, permit one was 50 and michigan second permit was 50. so that's what i spent so far on permits all US dollars and then tomorrow I'll pay 450 to the escort and uh, after that we're just sitting there at the border and we're waiting for the Ontario permit not sure how long it's gonna take maybe I should buy a house and get married in Michigan so I've been giving that a lot of thought take care